Hello, this is Christopher Graham II from Bardic Insights here again at the request of my lovely hosts. Um, did I already say I'm from Bardic Insights? Ah, uh, whatever. Uh, but today, I will be discussing the sun god Ra, one of my favorite subjects, Egyptology. The sun is the number one energy source for our home. It provides lights to plants which allow them to grow and in turn allow us to grow the food that we need to survive. The sun is a very powerful thing. Uh, not enough of it and people would get sick too much people would die Everything would die with too much or too little Sun. We need just the right amount The Sun is a powerful thing without it life would not exist as it does in its current form today The Sun was a is a celestial body and it's to be loved and also feared um, throughout mo throughout history Almost every culture has some form of mythology revolving the sun. Some have their entire religions revolving around it. It's the basis. And some merely have some sort of creation myth revolving around it. But the sun is important and always has been. Now, Ra is, of course, no, no exception to this mythology. Ra represents sunlight, the sun itself, warmth and growth, all those things. Now, the Egyptians believed him to be one of a number of creator gods. Some saw him as the sole creator. Others saw him as just one of a few. Um, it all depends on the era of Egypt. Now, uh, he usually came in the form of a human with the head of a falcon with a sun disc as a crown. Now, around this disc was a cobra called Uraeus. I'm sorry if I'm messing that up, but this was representative of the of a goddess who was also said to protect the pharaohs, who some thought to be incarnations of Ra. Now, there have also been some depictions of him in full species of, say, a serpent, a heron, a bull, a lion, a cat, a ram, a hawk, beetle, phoenix, and a whole bunch of other crap. Like, he... They, they, they just could not decide what he was. However, his main symbol is the sun disk. That is one uh, common depiction throughout all of these. However, some people may that aren't familiar with Egyptology may confuse him with Horus, who is also depicted with the head of a falcon. However, the two were later on fused into one deity. Uh, Ra was actually fused with a lot of different deities, which I'll, I'll get into uh, later. But his job... You see, and he had a really e well, kind of easy job. Uh, it depends on your point of view. He's his job was to sail across the sky on his boat, which was named. Bar I'm gonna m m misquote this. Bark of millions of years. I'm sorry if I butchered that. Uh, in the mornings, his boat was named Majet, which means becoming strong. Got to get the protein. Ah, sunlight, son. And by the end of the day, it was called Semektet, which means becoming weak. During this journey, he fought with a t Apep, uh, which was a large serpent, uh, notoriously evil, and was also known as the Lord of Chaos, who would attempt to swallow Ra and the sun. This is actually relates to why the sun disappears at night. This was their explanation of why. It, said, it was said that Apep would swallow Ra every night. However, he would eventually spit him back up, which would allow for the cycle of day and night. In some stories, Ra defeats Apep actually in the form of a cat. Ra created himself from the primordial chaos, is how, how it was explained. The primordial chaos was just the just the original liquidy, watery stuff that it was said that it, creation rose out, rode out, rose out of. Blah, 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 blah. Um, he also comes in other names such as Re and is closely closely associated with the god Atum. Now, he has a number of children, most notably Shu, the god of dry air and father of the sky, and his twin sister Tefnut, the goddess of moisture and wetness. I feel dirty. I feel dirty talking about her. She's responsible for the morning dew, by the way. Uh, at least that's what we'll call it. Now, there is one particular story where Ra grows very weak. In this story, Isis created a snake with raw saliva and then sends it to bite Ra. Due to the amount of pain he was in, he allowed Isis to search through him uh, so that way she could find his true name, which was the secret to his power. Upon finding it, she healed him. However, his powers were transferred into her, so I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you feel about that deal, but it sounds like he got the short end of the stick. 
Now, Ra had a number of temples, but one of his most, one of his biggest temples was a sun temple located in Heliopolis. Hel Heliopolis? I, I don't know. Uh, and in it was said to sit the tree of life. Now, the fruit of this tree was reserved solely for the pharaohs. It was also called the sacred Ished tree, or Ished, Ish, Ished? I don't know, I'm sorry. But it was said that eternal life would be granted to, the, to those who ate of the fruit. Now, also in the temple uh, sat Bennu, which was the bird that represented one of the five aspects of Ra's soul. Now, the, the ancient Egyptians believed that the, the human soul, or, or the soul in general, was made up of five parts. Now, Bennu represented the Ba, or the personality. It appeared similar to a crane and represented rebirth. It was actually thought that this was the origin of the phoenix myth, specifically the Greek phoenix myth, and was seated at the Tree of Life in Ra's temple on the Ben-Ben stone. Now, the Ben-Ben stone is a pyramid-shaped stone, which is a beacon to the phoenix. It's a very important symbol in, to, to ancient Egyptians. Ben-Ben stone is actually also the imp inspiration for the topmost stone on a pyramid, also called a pyramidion, and was thought to have been an early design of the obelisk. It, it's pretty much just a, a mini pyramid, but uh, there's some pretty... I'd, I'd go look it up, because there's some pretty cool ones out there. The one inside the Temple of Ra in Heliopolis was where the first rays of the sun fell each day. Now, there were solar temples built for Ra, however, instead of a statue, as was featured in most other temples dedicated to gods, the temple was open to sunlight, which was used to represent Ra. Now, the earliest known temple exists in, you guessed it, Heliopolis, which is now Cairo suburb. It is known as Bennu Phoenix and is believed to be in the same spot where Ra emerged. Now, as I said before, Ra was fused with several deities in ancient Egyptian, including a moon, a tomb, Kepri, and a number of others. Now, Kepri and Knum, Knum, Knumenim, Knumeni, Knumemeni. Sorry. Uh, now, they were often seen as either separate deities or separate aspects of Ra. However, each were as associated with the sun and different times of the day. Kepri was said to represent the morning sun and was depicted with the head of a beetle. Most likely it derived from the image of a dung beetle moving its ball of dung across the ground. If you've never seen it, it looks pretty weird, kind of gross, but still cool. And Kanum was the evening manifestation of Ra and was said to have the head of a ram. Now, for a short time period, Ra was pushed aside in favor of the worship of Aten, which is the actually the name for the solar disk that's often seen depicted with Ra. Now, this was pushed aside by the pharaoh Akhenaten, or Amenhotep IV, which was he was also the father of Tutankhamun, or as most people know him, King Tut. However, after a 17-year reign, polytheism was reestablished, and Ra took his place once again. Now. Aken, Akhenaten, I'm just going to call him Amenhotep because that's easier. Um, Amenhotep was very different because he kind of favored monotheism, or at least quasi-monotheism, in, in terms of the fact that he worshipped a ten solely. He, he not solely, I get it. <laughs> um, but he, he focused mainly on a ten and was like, all these other gods, get out of here. Now, in the creation myths revolving around Ra, it was said that all forms of life were created by Ra, and he called each of them into existence by seek speaking their secret names. Um, however, alternatively, man was created from Ra's tears and sweat, hence the Egyptians calling themselves the cattle of Ra. Uh, it's interesting how the idea of names, and in everything having a, a special, specific name, it appears in several cultures around the world. It, I, I find that very interesting, and I've always been interested in the idea of that. It's actually rather interesting. Even though people worshipped Ra, it was there's one story um, where mankind actually plotted against Ra, and as punishment, he sent them his eye as the goddess Sekhmet to punish them. However, she uh, she got a little overexcited and got kind of bloodthirsty, so <laughs> she uh, she killed a lot more people than she probably should have. 
So Ra, in order to pacify her, actually gave her beer mixed with red dye, which she mistook for blood, because she was literally bloodthirsty, and drank that instead, and I guess she got a little tipsy, if you know what I'm saying. It's, it's really hard to go over all of the stuff that we know about Ra, because there, there really is so much information about, uh, about Ra out there, and a lot of it seems to conflict or either mix and all this other stuff as it's been changed over thousands upon thousands of years. I'd really recommend going into, um, or getting into Egyptology as a whole and just really looking into that culture, which is so fascinating. Um, for instance... Uh, Ra, in some literature, is described as an aging king with golden flesh, silver bones, and hair of lapis lazuli, which is insane and sounds really cool. But um, overall, I've, I've always been interested in Egyptology, and I'd highly recommend looking into this because what, what I've talked about today is just nothing compared to the actual lore out there. And I apologize if anything I said uh, was inaccurate, as I I did a bunch. I tried to do as much research as I could, because I am interested in this. However, I am in no way an expert, uh, and would highly recommend you 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 go out and uh, verify this information yourself before going off and bragging. Hey, guess what I learned from some random guy on the internet. Um, but that's enough rambling out of me. I hope that you've enjoyed this little uh, little blurb. That, I, that I've done here today, and I will allow my lovely host to take over once again. This has been Christopher Graham II from Bardic Insights, and please have a wonderful day. Hello everybody, this is Liz is a T-Rex, and I want to thank all of the subscribers and watchers that have watched this video today. Um, without your support, this channel would not be what it is becoming, and being able to provide this to all of you is wonderful. I'm enjoying every single bit of it, and I'm hoping that you guys are as well. Um, so on to the thank yous with the people that are helping me with this. I want to give a thank you to Chris and Bardic Insights for lending me their voices for all of these videos. Without them, I would not be able to get nearly as many scripts and s scripts done without their assistance. Also, another thank you to Shadow for doing the artwork. Um, I wouldn't have any background videos for you guys to pay attention to without her helping me because I am no artist drawing. This is not my strong suit. So uh, be sure to give Bardic Insights and Shadow some attention. Go to their pages. Go give them a like. Um, get them a little bit of traffic because, again, this series would not be what it, what it is without their help. Also, a new um, thank you to Sarah, or Flower. Um, she is another writer that has joined me in on this series, and it has helped me tremendously by lightening the workload for me so that I can work and provide all of this content for you guys. So, now that we're done with thank yous, let's go on to the updates. The shirts for Raw will be up on Teespring until May 30th. Be sure to buy one while you can. They won't be in um, they won't be in stock for very long. And any purchase and funding that I get with these shirts goes straight into making more videos for you guys. I don't keep any of the profits. It's specifically for helping my channel grow and get bigger. So so if you guys decide to buy one, thank you so much because you were helping me get more content for you guys. Um, another thing is my request box on Tumblr is open, so if you have any gods that you want me to cover or you want us to cover, be sure to send me the name of the god and the culture that it is from or country or part of history um, so that we can make those videos for you because I would love to start doing requests. Um, another thing... So, last night, out of nowhere, I guess this has been a continual thing for, like, the past three days, I suddenly hit 100 subscribers. Um, I don't know where you guys came from, but thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. And, um, I would love to have, to hear some ideas you guys have for a 100 subscriber video. So if you have any ideas, post them in the comment section below and I will look through them and see what we can do. So on top of that, I wasn't going to announce this, but because we hit 100 subscribers, I want to announce it now. 
I am working on a second series. It's kind of similar to the one we have going right now, but different at the same time. So I won't be giving any full details other than what I just said until about June or until the end of June because I need time to organize it and figure out the formatting. So on top of that, um, thank you again for all of your patience. I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me ramble on. So thanks so much. Be sure to su uh, la, la, la. be sure to subscribe and give me a thumbs up and comment if you can if you feel up to it. And thank you so much. Have a wonderful day and keep keep living.